Welcome to a special edition of McClatchy's Beyond the Bubble podcast, coming to you live from Charleston on an overcast Monday here. I'm Alex Rorty, a national political correspondent for McClatchy. We're going to do something a little bit different this week. In a few minutes, we're going to bring you an interview with the chairman of the South Carolina Democratic Party, Trav Robertson, after the state party's first in the South dinner, where each of the major presidential candidates is talking. We'll talk to him about the state of the Democratic primary in the Palmetto State and why it's different than the previous contest in this race. But first, we wanted to bring on Adam Walner, national politics editor for McClatchy, to talk about Nevada. Because, wow, a lot happened in Nevada. Adam, Bernie won, and it wasn't close. And it feels like even more so than after Iowa and New Hampshire that Sanders is an overwhelming front runner in this race. Yeah, and, and I guess we should note, even as we're re- recording this on uh, a Monday afternoon, we still don't have all of the results in from Nevada, which, um, boy, if, if you thought after Iowa that there was a chance that caucuses might live on after 2020, uh, I think this was the, the, the final nail. I hope you enjoy the caucuses so far <laughs> eh? because and, it's not happening. And time. honestly, the reason that we are not talking more about that is because the race was called so early on Saturday for Bernie Sanders, right? It wasn't like in Iowa when everybody was so bunched up. And, and that has been the prevailing storyline here, obviously, over the past couple of days, um, you know, walking away with a double digit victory in Nevada. And, you know, I think it's worth looking back to 2016 when he was running at this point, it was basically a one on one race with Hillary Clinton. And this is kind of where Hillary regained her her traction a little bit or her footing, because it was a very close race in Iowa uh, that Hillary ended up winning narrowly. Bernie had a big win in New Hampshire. And uh, Hillary Clinton was able to come in and and get a a single digit win in Nevada. And that really kind of put her on the path forward to to the nomination. (laughs) In a lot of ways, it looks like, you know, Bernie Sanders may have done something similar for his campaign. Obviously, it's a much different scenario where, um, you know, still no one has gotten the majority of a vote in any of these contests. It still is a very divided and closely bunched up field. But. The, you know, the, one of the big questions we've had about Bernie Sanders ever since his 2016 campaign ended is, can he expand his base? Can he make inroads, particularly with non-white voters where he struggled uh, so badly in 2016? And that question, I think, was answered yes <laughs> on, on Saturday, winning overwhelmingly with Latino voters, uh, which made up roughly 20 percent of the electorate there. He made inroads with with even moderate and conservative Democrats. Uh, He even uh, was leading among Democrats um, who are looking for the most electable candidate who can beat Donald Trump in 2020. So this was a really resounding victory for Bernie Sanders. And perhaps even more importantly for him going forward, there still is no clear alternative that emerged to to him. uh, Because, you know, now, even though he's now taking you know 35 40 percent of the vote you know we'll see where it ends up landing obviously you, there still may be some sort of opening for somebody to uh, to kind of emerge on that moderate lane and challenge him but the time is running out fast here 